Oh my god. My needle drops. Anthony Fantano here, the internet's nose runniest music nerd. And it's time for a review. ASAP Rocky. Long live ASAP. ASAP Rocky is a Harlem rapper and this is his commercial full-length debut since blowing up a few years ago with the infamous Live Love ASAP mixtape, which was actually one of the best tapes of that year, featuring tons of hazy, just atmospheric production from Clams Casino, as well as a lot of chopped and screwed vocals, very relaxed flows, and overall a very kind of druggy, hazy vibe. But before I get completely entrenched in this review, I have to address a few questions and issues that constantly, constantly come up with ASAP Rocky. I do this to kind of circumvent the angry fart cloud of comments that is sure to gather underneath this video. Is it uh, true that ASAP Rocky is a um, mediocre lyricist? Yes, that's true. ASAP Rocky is pretty much an average lyricist. He does have flow, he does have charisma and personality, he does kind of have his own little rap style, but still, as far as lyrics, lyrical content, wordplay, a lot of the magic isn't really there per se. However, we are kind of in a new era of rap where lyricism isn't dead, but a lot of rappers that aren't that lyrical can easily compete with rappers who are very lyrical. And the thing is, they're making worthwhile music as well, the not so lyrical rappers, because they are more likely to go down a road where the beats are catchier, the hooks are more infectious. I personally don't feel like you need to have all these heady, meaningful messages and a ton of impressive lyrics in order to put together a good project. Does ASAP Rocky depend too much on his production? I almost can't believe when people say stuff like this. Like, yeah, of course ASAP Rocky is very dependent upon his production, the beats he chooses. I mean, the beats he chooses makes his projects worthwhile. However, in post-2010, post My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy Hip Hop Land, what MC isn't dependent upon their production? Yeah, guys like Action Bronson and Big Crit and Danny Brown and Kendrick Lamar, as well as Yay, are all praised for some of the things they say, some of the messages that they have, I mean certainly contribute to their personalities, but they're also unique because of the beats that they either produce or they choose to hop on. I mean, the instrumentals that they choose to rap over give them a musical edge that makes them stand out against other MCs. Is it true that ASAP Rocky didn't invent the sound he has. Yes, ASAP Rocky is incredibly influenced by other styles of hip-hop and he is kind of this amalgamation of all of them. Everything from East Coast style boom bap to Southern Houston stuff, chopped and screwed, as well as those darker, more atmospheric rappers such as Space Ghost Perp, who people seem to be really angry that ASAP has gotten way more famous than him in the rap game with that style. You know, he wouldn't be the first guy on the the planet to kind of get influenced by a growing style and then make a huge record with it. So what? Is it true that ASAP Rocky sounds like ASAP Brack? ASAP Rocky's name does sonically resemble that of ASAP Rock and I don't care. I think it's hilarious that people actually think he did this to try to grab the attention of ASAP Rock fans when that wouldn't even really be a good marketing scheme considering that one rock makes an entirely different kind of hip hop than the other. I don't think there's a lot of crossover fandom going on here. So there's really no reason to compare them or even think of one when the other's name is mentioned. It's asinine. Now that, now that, now that that's out of the way. I am well aware of ASAP Rocky's flaws, and for sure, they can come around and bite him in the butt. I mean, I think we all saw that when he dropped his ASAP Mob mixtape a little while back last year. Only so many of his weaknesses can be piled on top of one another before you're just listening to crap. But honestly, I was pretty surprised and impressed that he came through on this album. One track after another, ASAP Rocky makes the right beat choices, gets good producers, good writers on here, current features, he writes and co-writes the right hooks, and on top of all that, he maintains 
maintains his style while still coming through with an album that feels a bit more commercial, has some nice radio-friendly singles, and I'm sure some people may even interpret this album as a bit of an improvement over Live Love ASAP because of its variety, because of its more detailed production, and overall it's more kind of expensive, sort of new, improved, and, and revamped feel. Don't get me wrong, I do think Live Love ASAP is a great tape, and its consistently slow and, and hazy feel makes it a pretty potent listen from beginning to end, but what ASAP Rocky does on this album instead is just brings variety, a little something for everybody, something for a different mood on almost every track, and even though, yeah, he doesn't really step up lyrically or anything like that, I do think he proves himself to be pretty versatile, more versatile than I think some people assumed he could be. This album opens up with the bass rumbling title track, which has all this disjointed imagery thrown together of cash registers ringing, guns cocking, cocaine, hearses, and it's kind of got this gangsta vibe to it, but it's also posed in this sort of weird, reverbed, artsy way that I like a lot. And I love the spacious falsetto vocals on the chorus that just soar over the beat once the track switches off from the verse. It is just a nice transition and one of the prettiest moments on this album. This track has quite a few producers credited to its name and it really shows. The track Goldie comes in shortly after this. It's pretty much like a haters anthem, but a hilarious one saying that people are talking shit about him until they get lockjaw. ASAP Rocky throws out some corny lines here and there like, I think I'm the shit, tell me do I stink. There's another line on here saying, I think I'm king, ask Coretta Scott. But honestly, it's not that serious. It's kind of semi a joke. Yeah, ASAP Rocky does put forth this really cool personality. He's very composed much of the time, very cocky. But at, that, but at the end of the day, this album is about fun. It's about being appealing. And ASAP Rocky manages to do that while still having this really kind of cavernous, sleek, and sort of dark vibe. Right after this track, PMW comes in which of course stands for Pussy Money Weed. What did you expect? And this song is just, you know, another extremely charismatic stunt anthem with some nice atmospheric synthesizers and a lot of clickety-clack rhythms. Schoolboy Q comes through with a nice feature. And moving ahead, I actually enjoy the song Fucking Problems quite a bit. Drake's on this track as well as 2 Chains on the hook. Kendrick Lamar follows up in the back. I actually think Kendrick is the weakest moment. Not because he's a bad lyricist or anything like that, but I just feel like this party track, especially when she's like, and she wants that dick. To me, he just feels slightly out of place here. He's so much more fitting on the song One Train a little bit later, which is this huge, long, posse track. Really lyrical, really hard hitting. I love the epic cinematic beat on this thing. I've mentioned this song in a previous video and I'm still enamored with it with huge names on this thing like Action Bronson, Danny Brown, Big Crit. It just does not, and Yellow Wolf too does not disappoint. ASAP Rocky goes kind of weird and suicidal on the song Phoenix, and he gets kind of personal with his rap history and, and growing up with hip hop and just being a hip hop fan at the closing track of this thing. There's also the dubstep and reggae influenced Wild for the Night, which actually features Skrillex on production, which I believe was kind of a, a flip of a Birdie Nam Nam production. This French DJ outfit that you should definitely check out. So this album does have some surprising left turns, some messages and cohesive narratives here and there. I will say though, this album does have have its low points. For one, ASAP Rocky's singing toward the end of Phoenix, yuck. Also, the song Pain has really one of the most nondescript beats on this entire LP, and of course ASAP Rocky's lyricism doesn't really make the song feel all that distinct either. Hell also on this album, which features Santee Gold, has some decent verses, you know, some interesting personal quirks in there with ASAP Rocky saying, we used to be in rugged boots, now we're getting tailor suits, but the Santee Gold hook is just so flat and lifeless. It doesn't even feel like she's trying to put emotion into her vocals. And Fashion Killer is this incredibly saccharine and just sickening love song where it seems like ASAP Rocky is rapping about a woman, but he's more interested in the clothes she's wearing. That's really kind of 
what's making him fall for her. Um, I mean, you know, you could throw some clothes on a mannequin and maybe it would look attractive to him at this point. I don't know. This song really should have been a bonus track could have gotten switched out with Ghetto Symphony, and that would have been nice. And ironically, this track credits way more writers than most of the songs on this entire LP, and it's just... Ugh. Still, I have to say, overall, I enjoyed listening to this album a lot. I mean, I thought it was really, really good for a commercial hip-hop ever, and ASAP Rocky came through with his head held high, his bass rumbling, his atmosphere there, his cockiness there. I mean, you know, not that he really needed to change all that much to make a commercial album. Live Love ASAP in and of itself really kind of plays with a lot of those hedonistic ideas that commercial hip-hop usually does. But still, that's not to say that ASAP Rock doesn't have his own angle on this style. He sort of ushered in this more atmospheric production as a mainstay at the moment. I'm gonna stop ranting. I'm gonna stop ranting. I'm feeling a strong seven to a light eight on this thing. If you've given it a listen, what did you think? Love it, hate it, why, and what should I review next? Anthony Fantano, ASAP Rocky, forever. Thank you.